Welcome to my marketing mastermind. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome, Amy and Kathy. Thank you for tuning in. And for those of you who are tuning in on our YouTube channel, we're so excited that Dr. Andreas is with us to share his story, which I think is amazing, about his beginnings. Uh-oh. There you are. Okay. Stand by. <laughs> And we've got an upside down recording, Amy, with you. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Andreas started out many years ago in the world of chiropractic care. And yeah, not too many. Yes. <laughs> Was it just yesterday? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and before we talk about my lovely experience and the opportunities I've had working with Dr. Andreas, I would love to hear about your beginnings before you became a public speaker, because I think your story is really captivating, just for a few minutes, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Yeah, no, thank you. And thanks for having me, and, and nice for everyone to joining in on this and watching in on the recording in the future. You know, I wasn't a public speaker in the beginning. It actually kind of fell in my lap out of sheer necessity. Uh, as you probably know, and I don't know what your opinion is of chiropractic, but there are some stereotypes out there. People have some stigmas. They think they know who we are. We're not a real doctor or a quack and blah, blah, blah. And so I did what everybody did when you start a new business, which is I printed up some fancy business cards and started going to networking events. And I quickly realized how much I hated them and that I'd rather pull my own teeth than go to another networking event. And so, because uh, I just found it to be a giant incest pool where everyone was clicky and who got to know who. And I was like, oh, just make me vomit. So what I did notice, though, is that the speaker was always the one walking out with all of the leads. And I thought, you know what? I want to be that guy. I want to be that gal. And so at that point, I was also struggling in practice. I was almost bankrupt before I even got started in the first 30 days. I had about $4,000 in the bank and $4,500 doing rent in two weeks. So it was time to, you know what, or get off the pot. And so I just said, you know what, I'm gonna to throw together a workshop and I'm gonna invite anyone and everyone to my office and I'm gonna tell them what chiropractic really is, what the truth is and why it's different and why it matters and why they should seriously look at it to add to their arsenal for their family's health and well-being. And so I invited as many people as I could. I had 10 people sign up and show up, which was great. Five of them were already patients. I think they were just there for moral support, which was great. But then five were guests. And the crazy thing is, is that that was really kind of the easy part. What I realized once I started walking in the door is that, holy crap, I'm not a speaker. What do I do? I literally was perspiring so profusely and I wasn't wearing a jacket. I couldn't hide it. You could see it. I wanted to run out the back door as quick as they were coming in. And, uh, but I'd made a promise and these were people that were sitting there waiting. And so I started this presentation and I tried to play it off like I wasn't nervous, that I was as cool as a cucumber. And I could, you could just feel the tension in the room. Like they were just feeling sorry for me. They're like, Doc, come on. And then something hit me in that moment and I said, you know what, and this is one of the biggest things I teach in speaking is that give up perfection for authenticity. And so in that moment, I just, some came over and I said, look, obviously I'm a sweaty, nervous mess. I'm not a public speaker, but I am one heck of a chiropractor. And I really care about the health and well-being of this community. So if you can bear with me as I fumble through this presentation, but know where I'm coming from and helping your family live the high quality of health and well-being that they can from the inside out, could I count on your support as I work through this presentation? And it was like, everybody just went, oh, yes, thank God. I'm so glad you said something. I feel so bad for you. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and that's how my public speaking career started. And the best part about it, when I discovered in that moment is that three of those five guests came in for uh, my offer, which was a complimentary exam and x-rays if necessary. And the best part is, is that all three accepted care and my average case fee at that time was about $3,500. And so it was about $10,500 for my first nervous, sweaty, bumbling, ugly, unprepared presentation. And that's when the light bulb hit and how I got started with my speaking career. And it became my number one marketing tool, and it still is to this day. Well, marketing is the name of the game in this marketing mastermind. And 
I'm honored that we finally get to have you with us. I have to say that I saw you on stage, you shared a little bit of this story and really motivated me. I, I had never done this before in my life to run to the back of the room. I still have a fob somewhere. <laughs> I and I'm so grateful you did. Yes, sir. One thank of you. our best students. Yes, oh, sir. there it is. There it is. I love this it. This is the fob with the secret sauce. Um, some of you have heard me talk about the Get the Gig Tracker. I talk about that all the time because um, you really need to have a mindset and some tools on how to get your gigs in order to market yourself, which is why Dr. Andreas has created Amplify Your Talk. And it is that course and that investment in his VIP program, Live and In Person, that I was overjoyed on my return and in investment. My first public speaking, some of you have heard me talk about this gig, I wound up on every network in Las Vegas, and then the next day after I spoke on the cover of the newspaper, <laughs> that just doesn't happen by accident. So I give no. Dr. Andreas a lot of credit and um, it's too cheesy and too much, but in the last few months, I have amassed not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. <laughs> but like, Woo -hoo! So I totally credit my mentor, Dr. Andreas. So let me just say all that and then give you a moment to talk about how you created Amplify Your Talk and what it does. Because I well, Amplify Your Talk actually, um, and this is the way that I like to create all my programs and products. It really helps to get entrepreneurs outside of creation mode, which we can get stuck in and preparation mode and not in selling mode. And so what I decided to do, because I had done some work with T Harbecker, I was director of sales there for a while. And then I was working with Brian Tracy and the certification program. And then, you know, Brian Tracy basically at his Christmas party at his home said, okay, Andreas, it's time for me to cut your wings. I'm letting you go. I'm like, what? No, you can't let me go, Brian. And he said, you're just too good at what you do. It's time for you to go. And I know you want to do it anyway. And I'm grateful that he did. And we're still friends to this day. And we still talk every now and then. But here's the deal is that I got invited to speak at a conference. <clears throat> um, Focal Point Business Coaches, about 65 coaches in the room. And bear in mind that Amplifier Talk didn't exist. And I knew that this was something I was so passionate about because, I, like I said, it's the number one marketing tool that I use. It's the number one marketing tool that no one can compete with you on. And it's the most cost-effective marketing tool because it's free and it's highly leveraged. And so what I decided to do is I went there. The course didn't exist. I just created an offer, an order form. Everything is inside the Amplifier Talk program on how you do that and put together this presentation and sold the course before I created it. And wow. so I'm a huge proponent of that, is that sell it first, validate it, make sure the market wants it, and then you can create it. And here's the best part about it, is, is that um, out of that audience, 40% of the room bought. I had about $30,000 in sales on a product that I had yet to create. Awesome. And the best part of it was is that, okay, I was, a, I was actually a bit surprised, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, my God, look at this. And, you know, three VIP days. Were, I had never done a VIP day. All that was sold, and it wasn't, it didn't, none of it existed. Never delivered it. Now, I did do it in full transparency. You know, I didn't lie or mislead the audience. I just said, hey, listen, I can't think of a better audience to be able to create this program with you. It is something that I'm deeply passionate about. I use every single day. In fact, I'm demonstrating it right here in front of you now, and I would love to be able to have you help me create a phenomenal program. Raise your hand if you would like to be part of it. <laughs> Boom, right? <laughs> and all the hands, I was like, oh, my God. And so I gave him a great deal for it, and then we started the class. And so all I had to do was stay a week ahead of them, and I was writing and creating. And the best part is that it allowed me to create the course get paid while I create the course, focus on the course, and create a better course because I was taking actually people through it and getting it done faster than I had ever done if I would have just sat there in a lab, just kind of thinking, well, let me just write this. What should it look like? No, I had a group of students that were ready for content the next week. And wow. the best part of it is that I was creating content so quickly and putting it in there. It was like about the third or fourth week, I was just like, oh my God, I'm just exhausted. My brain's fried. Um, 
you know, what am I going to tell these students? I'm a little bit behind. I got to get this thing done. And a couple of them in the private Facebook group were like, Andreas, we're loving this course, <laughs> but can we take a week to just catch up for a second? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, of course you can. Sure. Go ahead. I'm not on my side. I'm going, whoo, thank God, because I needed it too. Oh, goodness. Um, and, you know, and that's how Amplifier Talk was really born. And, and I think the thing that I'm the most proud of, especially out of that founding group, there was no refunds on a course that hadn't existed yet. Wow. So that's a testament to the, your success in the product. Now, could you tell people what's in that course? Because the content, I it was very content rich. There wasn't a lot of fluff. I felt you were really speaking to what you need to do. If you would walk them through what Amplifier Talk actually is. Yeah, and I want to make sure this is content too, because I don't want to just sit here. I'm not trying to sell the course. I want everybody to relax. Yeah. Hopefully, no, no. everybody's just kind of enjoying what we're doing here. Um, and so, uh, the, you know, I'm German by birth, and so I was just taught you don't mess around. You know, just get to the nuts and bolts. And so I can't stand courses that are fluff that just dance around the object where the whole sales process and the sales sequence and the product launch formula has more content in it than the freaking course does. You know, and so I just, I do it the opposite way. So inside Amplifier Talk, it really just gives you everything that you need to help to build a powerful, persuasive, and engaging presentation how to structure your offer, how to get clear on your market, how to determine your avatar, how to get in their mind how to speak to their mind. And this is a big tip that I would tell everyone who's out there speaking. It is never, ever about you. It is who's in that room and what are their hopes, what are their dreams, what are their fears, what are their worries, what are their concerns, how do you uniquely solve them, and what have you done it before, and how have you helped them, and how have you bridged the gap, and what result in life do they now enjoy? And that's what gets people motivated. So the whole kickstart of the exercise is you know getting clear on what's going on in your customer's mind first right who is that ideal client trying to be all things to all people you end up being to no one and so many of my clients especially when they come in they get so much clarity because they all suffer from what i call multiple client personality disorder <laughs> where they're just like well i can do this and i can do that and i can do that well that's fantastic you're going to connect with no one the next time you speak <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and I, I just want to stop you because I do have to share my personal story. I believe Kathy is the only person who is in the audience for this, but the second time I competed for a public speaking contest, I won first place in both things, that, that the contest that we had, but I really, really believe 2,000%. <laughs> the reason that I won, I would think it was international public speaking contest uh, here in Las Vegas, Right. was because my speech, unlike all the others, which can be considered the seam of sea of sameness, was not about me. I tried to make it about the audience, right. the message that everybody can be motivated and everybody should share their message. It was a little bit about, I didn't use the words amplifying your talk, about the power of your story right. and that everybody has a special story. And so I give you the credit for that exciting, unexpected, sweeping win. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're it's well deserved. I mean, you're a phenomenal student. You executed. You didn't reinvent the wheel. You didn't think about it too much. And so what I encourage everyone that's out here watching this is that when you start your presentation, start from the end. Don't start from the beginning. So what you want to do is how am I going to close? And who am I closing? So it starts even before that. It's like, who am I speaking to? And then what am I going to close? What is their end takeaway? Am I making an offer? Am I driving them to a strategy session? Am I driving them to a consultation? Am I looking to sell a mastermind? What is the end goal? And then from there, everything starts to work backwards from that, right? So then you look at the components of the offer and then you start to say, okay, now what teaching points support the offer? Everything has to support the offer. If it doesn't support the offer, it does not belong in your talk. Toss it. Get rid of it. All right? You can get into the gravel, what I call it. So many times when I coach speaker, I'm like, stop. You're in the gravel. That makes no sense. Where are you at right now? It doesn't even relate to where you're taking them. All pull roads have to point to the offer. Your testimonials, the stories that you share, the anecdotes that you share. 
And so one of the key words and the most persuasive words that you can use in presentations to avoid the mistake that the other speakers you just talked about made yeah. is I guaranteed they use the word I. Right. Switch it to you. Isn't that powerful? That's just right? an important shift. And it's, it, there's, you know, and I have all the linguistics and all that's inside of the course on when you get into the advanced strategies of it. But once you start with where we know the offer is, so when I sit down with a VIP client, I'm like, okay, well, who are we talking to? Hopes, dreams, goals, wants, needs, and desires, fears, frustrations, right? What's the offer? How will you solve it for them? And anything can be an offer. You know, yesterday I spoke. This is why I love it so much. I just spoke at a woman's conference. 65 CEOs, executives, and entrepreneurs. And we're not there selling, but I offered them a lead magnet. I created an obliteration objection worksheet for them and kind of walked them through it. My whole talk supported that, right? Everything, that was my offer. And so at the end of the talk, so if you would like this, I see a lot of you raising, writing notes right now. They're like, yes, can you slow down? I said, you know what? I can even do better than that, ladies. How about if I just give it to you? Oh, yes, that's great. Perfect, perfect. Here's what I want you to do. Grab your favorite mobile device. Everybody's got one, yes? And then boom. Text your number, 858-433-4227. Text the word objections to it, and boom, you get the, the, the magnet. And 55 out of 65 women grabbed it. So in 40 minutes, that's 55, you know, more qualified leads than I would have had if I had just done a Facebook ad that have some level of trust for me. Now, now I can nurture that and build on it. Um, we're, I'd like to transition now into a little bit about how to sell because that's, I think, the big, a lot of people can speak, but selling is a challenge. Right. Before I do, what tool do you use to opt in? Infusionsoft or is there something else? So what I used uh, yesterday, it's a new one that I used because I used to be with Entreport and then I moved to Infusionsoft, as you know. And um, so I use this uh, service called Fix Your Funnel. And the guys there are great. I, I don't even have an affiliate code. If you go grab them, it's fine. But they give, you, they give me a 30-day trial with it. They totally helped me set up my text messaging campaign, <laughs> how to integrate it into Infusionsoft, which really wasn't that difficult once I kind of wrapped my head around it. You know, it took maybe, maybe you know, 60 minutes, but well worth it, and it worked like a charm. Fix so, your funnel. Fix your funnel. Integrates with Infusionsoft. It's a great way to you know do these crowd grabs when you're speaking and you're not allowed to sell or you don't have the time to sell you know 40 minutes is not enough time for me to try to sell a 500 or thousand dollar course and you know and i don't like it just doesn't feel right i'd rather give if i have an hour and a half that's different but at 40 minutes give rather than try to get all right, speaking of giving, you're giving of your gifts when you're on stage. You have knowledge, you have important stuff to share. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Andreas would say there is such a thing he calls prescription-based selling. So right. why don't we explain that to those who are tuning in? So basically, you know, sales is always the, the one thing that entrepreneurs typically struggle with the most, that they're great at the branding, the design, they get the marketing and they get their business cards, but then they don't have the sales process or structure in place to convert that lead into an actual paying client. And so when I worked with T. Harv Eker and I built them a sales team, I used this formula to teach this team how to sell on the phone, how to have high valued, high, um, uh, caliber strategy sessions to sell anything from a thousand dollar program to a twenty thousand dollar program in one call and it's rooted in my background as a doctor where it's diagnostic in its basis that's rooted in really a lot of questions so the key is is having a framework so I created this whole four phase 12 step framework that literally breaks down how you have a sales conversation in a way that's selling without selling that delivers massive value that allows you to maintain what I call white coat authority positioning, right? Where they see you as the prize. Cause remember they're the ones with the problem. And what I see so many people try to do is that they're in a sales call. They try to impress them. Remember they're the ones interviewing for the job. And so it's, it's a mindset shift. And I learned this early in practice because I didn't know how to sell. I was relying on all my degrees and titles and certifications. 
thinking yes. that, oh, yeah, everyone's just going to sign up for my care just because I'm a doctor. Wrong. <laughs> and so I learned I needed to learn how to sell. And, you know, in the beginning, I, I was too attached. So one of the rules that I teach is to exercise the law of detachment. Remove yourself emotionally from the outcome of the decisions that they make. Don't let it decide your worth or your value. Right? I'm totally okay if someone says no, if it's not a fit, or they're, because when I know I deliver a proper sales conversation, they're saying no to themselves, not no to me. And so this framework kind of teaches you the different things and the tricks of the trade that I will use in that, you know, how to overcome, oh, I need to think about it or, you know, well, let me mull this over a little bit and, you know, as if people really do that anyway. So and I'm just going to reiterate what you said earlier on in this broadcast. This is not a sales pitch. These are just tools I know that work and I want my best clients and those that are tuning in that are um, working with me to have this knowledge because it's like if you have access to wonderful tools, you need, you need to give it. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. And you know, I'm just planting a seed in everyone's mind in two weeks from now, we're going to do another call and I invite you all to come back and I'll just do a Q and a and I'll answer all your questions. So start thinking about your presentations, think about your sales conversations. What's your biggest challenge? What's your biggest hang up? And I'll just answer them freely. I'm an open book and I don't have any problems giving away my stuff. Um, and you shouldn't either um, when you're doing your work because where you really get to charge is for implementation and that's what people pay you for. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, one of the biggest things is to start thinking about the structure of your sales conversations and how you can lead them to a path of making a decision. And I'll give you one nugget right now to help you with the I think about it objection because I know you all get it. You're probably all frustrated by it. So there's a whole part in the early on in the, in the way that I teach handling objections is that you don't wait until the end. Everybody waits to the end and just hopes everyone's just going to buy it. And then they sit there like deer in headlights going, oh, shoot, they didn't buy it. I thought they wanted this. No, you need to preempt them all in advance. So the challenge I give you when you're doing your sales conversations is look at all the reasons why people are not buying. And then you'll start to find patterns. And what you need to do is you need to root them up early on into your sales conversation, okay? So let me give you an example. Uh, there's a client that I've been working with and coaching her on her sales calls. I listen to her sales calls, we meet, I have her set her metrics, I help her set her targets, I hold her accountable to them. And so she was getting a lot of people just not making a decision. They were not taking this seriously. And I told Anna, I said, listen, Anna, you need to set that up in the agenda. You know, in today's presentation, you know, thank you so much. If I just kind of role play this really quick with you, Meredith, it would just be like, you know, hey, Meredith, really appreciate you being here and sharing your time with me today. This is a very serious matter that we want to make sure is a good fit for both of us. Now, my time is very limited. We have a lot of these strategy sessions going on, and we want to make sure that if we can help you, that now is the right time. And if it's not, we should probably just go ahead and reschedule the meeting now. So if this is something that we can do to help you and it makes sense for you, is this something that you're really looking to take to the next level, or are you just still kind of kicking the tires? Which is it? I'm ready. <laughs> right? And you're calling them out early on it. And then as you start to get down, here's the think about it nugget. It'll work. I guarantee you, everybody listens to this, it will work. So the one of the most powerful laws in persuasion is the law of congruence. You cannot, you're not in the convincing business. A great sales conversation will have the prospect coming to the conclusion you want them to make. Right? If they say it, what you want them to say, you don't have to sell. They've now sold themselves. Because if they have an objection, who are they objecting to? <laughs> themselves. So one of the things after I start to create this prescription together and saying, you know, sounds like this is exactly what you're looking for. You want to spend a VIP day here with me. You want to spend eight hours working on your presentation. We're going to dial it in. We're going to get your offer straight. We're going to practice it. We're going to work on your opening. We're going to work on your presence. We're going to work on your posture. We're going to work on your delivery so you can have the confidence and the certainty and everything that you were talking about to achieve the results. Did we miss anything? No, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, look, this is a really important decision. Is there anything else we need to think about? 
Is there anything else we haven't thought of? Because now's the time to ask. Go, no, I'm good to go. Have I just killed the think about it objection? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. If they come back and say, oh, well, I want to go think about it, right? Then you, <laughs> then you can call them out on it. You just did. <laughs> right? And so you know, they say, oh, I really want to think about it. I said, you know, well, earlier when I asked you the question, if we were going to think about it, you said there was nothing else to think about. Has something changed? Now you can start getting, there's something else that you have not covered. There's an objection that's still there. Now, you do the same thing with the spouse. I have this in phase one of the sales conversation in the opening. You know, this is really important. We don't want to waste time. Is there anyone else that's involved in the decision-making process? Or are you in the position, if we can help you, to be able to move forward one way or the other? Nope, I'm the one who makes the decision. Great. Have I removed the spouse objection? It's done. It's gone. They can't say, so if if you take away their fire before it comes, they have nowhere to go but to make a decision. Because then at that point, I can be really strong at the end and say, well, look, I don't have a lot of time to waste. I have a lot of clients that I work. You're busy. I'm busy. The last thing you need is something to think about. Do you believe I can help you, Meredith? Yes. Do you believe you can do it? Yes. Great. Then what's the problem? The thing is, you got to have a little mustard. You got to have a little mojo. You got to like, you got to own it and say, you got to lead them. You got to coach them through. And a lot of you are coaches. Coach them. Coach them through their own limiting beliefs, their own barriers. Push through them. That's true. They have the gifts that many don't have when they're coaches. And I think everybody on the call is at the moment, actually. Exactly. Yeah. And the way that I structured, I have this other woman that I work with in, out of Colorado. And because of my, my, my conversation, I don't know what happened in my video. Oh, there we go. Um, because of the way that I structure my sales conversations, it's when people listen to them, they're shocked because it's about 85% questions. Or excuse me, I mean, 15% of me talking, which is just all questions, 85% listening. Ah. Right? And the way that I teach is very Socratic. It's a lot of question-based. She goes, the way that you coach me in my sales conversation is actually helping me to become a better coach. Because every time you tell me, you're because what I when I coach people, I don't tell you what to do. I help make you come to the conclusion. That's what great coaches do, right? And so when they come to that conclusion, they own it more than you telling them someone. And it's the same thing in sales. Well, clearly we could go on and on and on and on, which is why we want you to come back in two weeks. I'd be happy to. At, at the exact same time, 11 a.m. And I believe we picked, was it uh, June 8th? That sounds correct. I don't have my calendar open no, at the moment. Be mine because I have my video up full, but I'm going to make sure so everybody here can mark your calendar and start thinking about, I mean, this is where we will really dive in to your presentations and questions about your challenges with selling, challenges with speaking, um, and we will truly uh, do one of my favorite things, and that is mastermind. I'm excited to see just about every one of my top clients and my most beloved are on the line now, but I know if you've enjoyed this and you see value in it, we do ask that you share, and here's the deal please email me at meredith at the meredith show.com if you want the exclusive link for the next broadcast. So just send me an email with your questions in advance. We'll try and gather as much as we can in advance. Uh, does anybody have any questions as we're closing out? Nothing. Okay, good. Kathy, did you have one? I did. I was just going to ask, I think I've heard before that you have to start with the end and then, um, start with the what? I'm sorry. The end. You know, oh, the end, yes. The okay. mind, right? Yes. And then you said to get out of that creative mode. So tell me how you work yourself out of being stuck with a million things that you could say. Um, how do you get creative? How do you get into that creative space to put those thoughts together? I oh, that's a good question. Actually, you know, one of my favorite things to do is that once I've decided on the audience and I know the topic and I know the offer, 
what I like to do personally is I will lock myself in a room, like this is my home office here, and I will just put on YouTube speakers that are on that topic, speaker after speaker, and I'll just listen for like, you know, 30, 60 minutes. And what I'm doing is I just take notes of ideas that spark in my mind. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. And so that will then, and, and then all of a sudden I'll, I'll catch myself, I'll just turn off YouTube and then boom, just all this content comes just rattling out because it stimulated my brain around that idea. So that's one of my little tricks. Oh, I love it. Thank you. That's brilliant. Yeah, you're very welcome. Very cool. Well, as they say in TV, stay tuned for more. <laughs> if you enjoyed this broadcast, that you share it and give, give us your feedback and send me your questions at Meredith at the Meredith Show .com. And meanwhile, I have two weeks to figure out what kind of little present maybe Dr. Andreas will give you all. What do you think? Is that going to be cool? We'll have to sweet talk him into a little something. <laughs> well, right. It won't be too hard to twist my arm. Oh, see? <laughs> Excellent. Well, look yeah. at all those smiles. Thank you so much, Dr. Andreas, for being with us on our monthly marketing mastermind. And we are really excited to get into some laser coaching in two weeks. Um, did you have any questions or anything that you needed to say before we round it out? No, yeah, just a big thank you. Thank you for all taking your time out. I know how valuable it is. I respect it immensely. Send your questions to Meredith and then I will look forward to chatting with you in two weeks around any sales or presentation or speaking question that you have. And if I can help amplify your success, I'm honored to do so. So thanks for having me and you have a great coach in Meredith. So keep up the great work you do. Well, thank you so much. I'm honored to have you on this broadcast, and I can't wait to see you in two weeks. You got it. Sounds good. Close it out. Thank you.